when we start to talk about head-on BFM and those kind of things. The nose-high fighter has a big advantage. Why? Because he's got God's G at the top. You know, he's got like the big hand pullish, pushing him down. Down at the bottom, you have the, you know, the negative effects of, of G at the bottom side. So you've got to play that, okay, when you're, when you're fighting BFM. The next concept with turns is turning room. You need room to turn. You can get it vertically or you can get it horizontally or horizontally displaced from the bandit. Either way though, when, you, when, you, when you're maneuvering on a guy, you want to push him away to get some room away from him so you can turn. And when you make that turn, what? You want to be at the proper airspeed. How much turning room do you need? You need a diameter. You need a turn diameter. I mean, how much is a turn diameter for an aircraft at 450, you know, 450 knots? Well, it depends, because vertically up here, a turn diameter is probably, you know, a lot less because you have God's G. Down underneath, it's a lot more than horizontally. That's another number, too. But normally, uh, about six to 7,000 feet is what you need, displacement for about a 7G turn. A little less for up here, a little more for down here. But you need to get away from the bandit. You need to push him off so that you can take this rate radius now and fit it around to fly behind the bandit. Okay, let's take a look at two targets. An offensive BFM setup where the bandit starts out at two nautical miles or outside your turn circle. You're going to see the fulcrum go into a hard left-hand turn and essentially meet the F-16 in the front. There's really not much this guy can do. Even if he went straight, it wouldn't matter. This guy could pull around and meet him in the front quarter. Because why? This pass started at two nautical miles. Okay, this fulcrum was only pulling seven Gs, but he can meet him in the front even at seven Gs. Well, let's take a look at another Falcon view. Same, this is the exact same setup, but now you can see it from a, from a different view to help reinforce it. You jump this guy, you, start, you see this turn, you're watching him, watching him, watching him, and you start seeing the front part of his airplane. What happened? You started outside his turn circle, okay? And there you have a front quarter pass from this, okay? So it's important to ask yourself the question. When I start a fight, I kind of start jumping this guy and, and I ask myself this question, self, am I inside or outside his turn circle? Is his present turn rate gonna cause a front quarter pass? If his present turn rate's gonna cause a front quarter pass, I'm outside his turn circle. So, so what should I do different if I start outside his turn circle? Don't go for turning room, okay? Don't go for turning room. Why? Because you're not, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. If you go up, you might give him turning room. So if you, you, if you start seeing the front, start thinking weapons. Start thinking shooting them and killing them in the front with a weapon because there's nothing else you really can do. Now let's show a pass inside the turn circle, and you'll, got, you'll see from Falcon kind of how much different this one is. This is about a 7,000-foot setup. Again, fulcrum against F-16. Fulcrum's going to go into the same left-hand turn at the same G, and the Falcon's going to pretty much react to pretty much the same way he did before. However, the geometry is different from the start. Here's another view of the same thing, exact same turn. Quite a bit different. You don't see that front part of the airplane in, during this turn. You just see the F-16 maintaining 3-9 line position, pulling, pulling, and then finally closing in for a gunshot or a missile shot or whatever, whatever he's in parameters to take there. Okay. It's important then to talk about how we turn. I like to use a, a, an anatomy uh, analogy. If you start at the, at the shoulder, the guy can turn and meet you in the front. Okay, he can turn and meet you in the front. You're too far out. You're outside his turn circle. If you start closer in, near the elbow, now you can maintain your position on him because you drive into this elbow position just like you saw in the telestrator and you can maintain your position. How do you get to that spot? That's the key of offensive BFM. Fulcrum's out there flying around. Okay, you're starting behind him. You start to see him turn. If he doesn't turn, no BFM problems. You just drive behind and kill him. Okay, but he starts to turn. He's giving you BFM problems. You've got to solve those problems with the turn. You ask yourself, self, am I inside or outside this guy's turn circle? If I'm outside, then I better start thinking weapons, 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 and then a head-on fight. If I don't see, start seeing the front of his airplane, then what do I got to start thinking? I got to drive to, I got to BFM. I got to do offensive BFM. I got to drive to where the fight started. Okay, drive to where the fight started. That's the first step. When he turns, say, okay, he started his turn right about there. I remember this discussion of getting to the elbow, so I'm going to fly to the elbow. I'm going to drive to where the fight started, and then I'm going to start my turn when I see the line of sight rate start to increase. 
Okay, the fulcrum's going to turn, turn, and at some point he's going to start to turn rapid. When that line of sight rate increases, that's when you want to start to turn. And I've sat there in the back seat of D model and B model F-16s and seen that place come and go, and we're still driving, you know, because the guy, it just takes time to figure, you know, we're driving along, and I, there's a line of sight rate. Nobody's turning. Turn, 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 you know. Too late. We, we turn too late. So I've got a, so I've got a, a crutch at 30 degrees when, off the HUD. That's when you want to start your turn. And if you turn right there, you make your turn, you drive your flight path marker to a lag pursuit, two ship widths back, and you just hold that lag pursuit course, hold that lag pursuit course, hold that lag pursuit course until you get to 3,000 feet. Remember, BFM is an exchange of energy for position. So you're spending knots for nose position all the way around this corner. When you get to 3,000 feet now, the fulcrum's slower and you're slower, and now at 3,000 feet, that's the turn diameter. That's when you want to now pull the nose onto the target and take your gunshot. One note of caution as you pull your nose on them. When you get your fuselages aligned, what controls overtake when your fuselages are aligned? Your left hand, the throttle. Okay, out here, you can do it with nose position. You control your overtake with nose position. When you get your fuselage aligned, the only thing that controls overtake is this left hand. When you start seeing low aspect, low heading crossing angle, you got to use the throttle, you know, boards, whatever you need to control that. So now we're right in for a gunshot now on the guy. We were at 3,000 feet, we pulled our nose on him, and we'll just, we'll just show that here in Falcon. The guy has flown effective BFM. He got into 3,000 feet, his nose was in lag, as you saw, and now he's pulling his nose up to the target once he gets to 3,000 feet taking the gunshot and, and getting the kill. Now, note, all gunshots have one thing that, 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 that characterizes them, and that is the gun cross must be put right off the nose of the aircraft. If that aircraft jinx, then take the gun cross and move it to the new position. Okay, aircraft makes a move, take that gun cross, and always keep it, just project a long pitot boom off the target and put that gun cross right on that pitot boom. If he jinx, Put the gun cross up there, and then let the funnel catch up. First move the gun cross, because that's the true departure line of the bullets. Next, play the funnel to make the, to make the shot. Offensive BFM is the series of aircraft maneuvers we use to stay behind an opponent and ultimately fire missiles or the gun. In our discussion of offensive BFM, we talked about the need for being inside the bandit's turn circle before maneuvering for turning them. We also discussed the steps for driving your jet into gun parameters. Remember, offensive BFM is not a set-piece move counter-move event, but rather a series of fluid maneuvers flown in the future, not to where the bandit is, but to where he will be. Over half a century ago, Winston Churchill told an anxious nation that they would fight the Germans on the beaches, the landing grounds, the fields, and the streets. But in the dark summer of 1940, the Brits didn't fight them in any of those places. They fought them in the skies, and in doing so, created perhaps the greatest fighter matchup of all time. The Mark V Spitfire and this aircraft, the legendary ME-109. The Spit was a little faster, but the 109 could outclimb it and had a higher ceiling. Luftwaffe pilots tended to think the Spit could outturn them. But RAF pilots who flew a captured 109 disagreed. One clear advantage of the 109 was its fuel-injected engine that allowed it to maneuver under negative G. The Rolls-Royce in the spit was carbureted. Which was the better plane? You can make credible arguments either way. But the bottom line is that a handful of British fighter pilots stood off the Luftwaffe long enough that Hitler lost interest in the cross-channel invasion and attempted instead to go to Moscow in the winter. A fateful mistake. Okay, next up is defensive BFM. You know, we talked about offense where we started with initial position of advantage. Now we're going to talk about defense. Okay, in defense, the bandit has an initial position of advantage on you. And of course, we've got some desired learning objectives for defensive BFM. The desired learning objectives are given an initial position of advantage by the bandit. The first objective is to defeat all missile and gun attacks. If there's a missile in the air, then we quit fighting the bandit. We start fighting the missile or the gun, okay? Because there's no need to worry about the bandit if your, you know, cockpit fills with hair, teeth, and eyeballs, you know? And they're not in the proper lineup, you know? So, uh, so we've got to fight anything in the air first, okay? Next, we've got to create 